Welcome to Happy Talks with Dr. Alice and Donovan. Dr. Alice Fong is a holistic naturopathic doctor and founder of Amour de Soi Wellness. And Donovan Jensen is a software engineer and founder of HowToHappy.com. Together, they're out to cause more happiness in the world. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Happy Talks. My name is Dr. Alice, and this is my awesome co-host, Donovan. And today, we are talking about sleep quality and sleep deprivation. I think we've both been there. <laughs> a lot of us have. So, Donovan, what's your initial thoughts regarding this topic? Yeah, so the first thing that comes to mind is just how important sleep is and mm -hmm. that it's not necessarily and I feel like you know for the most part everybody knows that too everybody right. knows like oh I should be sleeping roughly seven to eight hours a night and mm -hmm. I should be high quality sleep and, and I feel like it doesn't get prioritized in the same way that like people are like I need to exercise and I need to eat better and I mm -hmm. like there's this bucket of things that it just nice. seems like everybody knows that they need to do good things in that category mm -hmm. and they tend not to so for sleep specifically, I think it'll be one of those things. Maybe we can like touch on it at some point. Why maybe we think like people aren't able to execute on that last piece. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, uh, one of the things that really is prevalent is that like when I don't sleep well, a number of negative unhappy things happen for me. <laughs> so I've personally tried to prioritize it a bit more, but I'd be curious what your thoughts are before I ramble too much. Yeah, no, I agree that it's such a big priority for me now. And it, it has been growing pains and discovering how important it is because I definitely don't feel like I function as well when I don't get enough sleep and I cannot. Well, I mean, I can't say I can't, but I prefer not to do what I did in college where I would just be up till like three or five in the morning writing a paper or hanging out with friends just like no big deal <laughs> now I'm a little more regimented or I'm like I I attempt to go to bed at 10 is my goal um and when I do I'm like excited that's maybe the adult in me <laughs> excited when I can go to bed at 10 uh that doesn't always happen I'm I'm thankful that I'm mostly a pretty good sleeper I actually just scored a 90 on my Fitbit sleep scored last night, so, which is usually I'm in the 80s, but once in a while I get a 90s. And if it's if it's lacking in sleep, like if I get less than seven hours, typically my score goes down. So I know like I need typically at least seven hours to feel decent. But on the flip side, you know, recently I traveled to Italy and that really fucked up my sleep <laughs> a lot of different ways and yeah I had to like spend a lot of time in an airport and I was sleep deprived and it took like two days to get there and there was a canceled flight so it just really really messed my sleep up and so I was like well maybe this is good maybe I'll just like conk out once um I get there although I had to stay awake I got like it was like we left on a Wednesday night and we got there a Friday morning, but it's like you have to account for the time difference. I didn't get a whole lot of sleep on the plane, maybe a little bit, and it's never quality sleep on a plane. But um, I was actually able to adjust to European time fairly easily because I think I was just so exhausted, even though 9 p.m. there is like 1 p.m or no, 12 p.m. here <laughs> on the West Coast. So moral of the story, I don't know where I'm going with that. I need good sleep. That's what matters. <laughs> Do you feel that there was like a, a point or something that happened that changed for you to start prioritizing sleep? Because I, I mm -hmm. could speak about that for a minute afterwards, but um, I feel like it's not always something that I was really thinking about in a useful way. Yeah, no, I think it was just my, and I've shared, I know I shared the story before. It was like my first year of med school where I would just study till like the hours of the night and it wasn't really helping me get good grades. <laughs> I was like, Hey, studying when your brain is not very functional. And it's like, 
pointless. It's actually more productive to get sleep. I think it was that first year of med school. So that was like 12 or 14 years ago. No, 14 years. Oh my God. That's 14 years ago, man. That's a teenager. 14 years ago (laughs) is when I really started to like put two and two together and that, Oh, if I sleep well, I perform better. Maybe I should make this a priority. And so that was the, the start of it, but I can't say that my sleep was always consistent. I always felt like I was a night owl in a way, but then I read the book, um, miracle morning or morning miracle by Hal Alrod. He's talking about my friend recommended. And I was like, sure, I'm into personal development books, not knowing that it was about getting up early. (laughs) I should have (laughs) like getting up early and consistently. And I did that book maybe like four years ago. And I, I think that's where it became even a higher priority. Like I knew I needed sleep, but it was more about like getting enough sleep, like seven, but the timing of it wasn't like too big of a deal to me. But now after like that book, maybe four years ago, like, no, I want to go to bed early. I like getting up um, early and like being more productive if I can. So mornings aren't like, it depends on how early in the morning, but I like, if I'm consistent with my routine, mornings aren't like the death of me (laughs) anymore, which is kind of nice. Yes. Yeah, that's what I've always heard is the more or the most important part is getting like a consistency in your routine, Mm -hmm. regardless of the specific, you know, if it's like 5am or or 11am, as long as it's like, you have the schedule, and it's very consistent. And then you have sort of the start of your day set up in a way that you build positive momentum. Yeah, because I think one of the things that I've heard a lot of, and I don't necessarily subscribe to is this idea of like, oh, you should get up as early as you possibly can and get a bunch of stuff done. And there's some ideas. I mean, I'm not an expert in this is not one of the things that I'm super well-versed in, but there's some ideas around, like, I think they're called chronotypes of just like, Mm -hmm. when is ideal for you to go to sleep and wake up? Um, And that shifts by uh, a number of hours, right? Like, so for some people, 11 PM to seven or or whatever else, I don't know the actual specifics, Mm -hmm. but figuring, figuring out that piece can really help a lot. I know for me, when I shifted my bedtime actually earlier and started getting up earlier, I started feeling a lot better, Mm -hmm. even though the amount of sleep was the same, even when the schedule was consistent, right? I had a consistent like later schedule, but it wasn't correct for me for just the time that I felt the most rested. Mm -hmm. But I know there's other people that I've run into that, you know, they have a consistent schedule that that shifted a little bit later that works really well for them as long as, you know, they get the right amount of sleep. So I, I guess one the, the point I'm trying to get across is like over time, I realized that it's not just this simple, like, Oh, get seven or eight hours of sleep, uh, which is what I originally thought or like my, that was my baseline idea. Mm-hmm. And there's a little bit more nuance. Uh, I found at least to getting quality sleep. Yeah, definitely. It makes a difference. I recognize though, that technically like from the European trip, I, I realized that my body can still handle like going a day without sleep, which I don't prefer to do, but it was impressive that I, I managed and actually felt like, okay. And I was like, oh, that's surprising to me. Um, but I know at times, like, like almost not getting any sleep versus like getting like three hours of sleep was like, a different, like getting only like a, a super short period, then I'm really cranky and groggy. But if I'm just powering through, I feel okay. It's a weird, a weird thing. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. In a related note, it's not exactly what you're talking about, but I feel like I also learned a lot when I realized that the quality of your sleep over a certain period makes a big difference Mm -hmm. by that. I mean, like if you miss one day, cool. You could like, I yeah, probably make it. It's fine. Back. Especially if I've been sleeping well before and I start sleeping well again. Right. But it's, it's sort of this like, Oh, I've only been sleeping six hours for two weeks straight. Like the sleep debt kind of builds up to the right. point where yeah. it becomes a, a lot more of a problem. So mm-hmm. that's another thing is that I used to sort of like skip out a little bit of sleep for very long periods of time and then have like a big crash 
and mm -hmm. realizing that, that that was not a good fit or useful. But I just figured, you know, like, oh, I almost got enough sleep and I almost got enough sleep. And it's like, mm -hmm. oh, I got 90% every day. So like I'm should be fine. But it's right. but when I switch my thinking around to like I'm missing 10% every day and every day I have yeah. to pay like I'm adding to the debt that I eventually have to pay back. Um that helped me get my head on a little more straight about like prioritizing sleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. It's like, I mean, I could survive off th six hours of sleep, but I know I'll just be tired, like, and dragging like the whole week long if I do that. And I, I mean, I used to do things like that. And then I would just, you know, sleep. I, I can remember when I used to sleep until noon and it was totally like, normal and fine and now I can't do that and I'm part of me is a little disappointed <laughs> in myself that I can't do that anymore I don't know if it's like a teenage thing but I did it in my 20s too yeah it's interesting yeah how her body yeah, no, I, well for me in my, in my trajectory I think it's because uh my schedule is a lot more regimented now mm -hmm. right yeah. and so when I was younger and and there is also some again I'm not super expert on these things but there is some idea of like your times are later as a teenager and then shift back mm -hmm. in, for most people into those earlier times as you turn into a full-fledged adult <laughs> but I also my, you know my schedule was way more flexible you know now mm -hmm. at you know, most days I need to be up by seven mm -hmm. at, at, at the latest mm -hmm. so my body is just like so in tune with waking up at seven that almost regardless of the time I go to sleep, I wake up around seven or seven 30. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of it is just like, I don't have as much flexibility for me, but I don't have as much flexibility as I used to like the patterns are so much more yeah. cemented than, you know, in college or high school, it was kind of like <laughs> a lot more just random and, and fluid. And then there were big gaps of time, like in the summer or whatever, that it would, that it would be mm -hmm. like, nah, I'm just sleeping until noon. Cause I can. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's kind of around the time I get up is like between seven and seven thirty. Um, and I part of it's because you know my workouts at eight thirty. I have a class, and then I have to get up and walk the dogs and meditate and do my morning routine. So it's usually around seven, and it's not not too bad most of the time. But I notice when uh, when I got back from Europe, though because of the time difference, I was getting up at like six and it was awesome. And I was like, oh, maybe I can sustain this. And I was going to bed at like nine and I was like, this is awesome. But I feel like there's so many things that just happen beyond 9 p.m. <laughs> it's hard to go to bed at nine. But I know some people, maybe, maybe when I have kids or some people are like bed by eight or nine. And I'm like, that's, that's awesome. When I, but if you like, if my teenage self was like going to bed at eight or nine, are you a grandma? <laughs> like kind of a thing. So my thinking has really shifted around this a lot. <laughs> yeah. I think it's really just a matter of what is actually effective for you. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I also, um, for a period, I kind of had like idealized, like, oh, I'm going to be going to bed early and getting up super early and like mm -hmm. doing all this stuff. And I did do that for a long time. Like, I forced myself to do it. Like, when I was doing my programming boot camp, I would get up at like mm -hmm. maybe even four, mm -hmm. might have been four to like work out before, before um, <clears throat> I went and did like the coding stuff all day. Yeah. But I realized just because like I can set that structure doesn't mean that I should because. Right. In one sense, I felt like very gratified that like, oh, look at me, like I can do this and, and this is like the correct thing. But in another sense, like that was completely arbitrary, right? It was just like completely made up like, oh, I'm awesome because I get up early and get stuff done. When in reality, it wasn't serving me because I was racking up a bunch of sleep debt during that time because I wasn't going to bed super, super early to accommodate for getting up super early. And then yeah. I didn't feel a hundred percent for mm -hmm. that period. You know, I felt like 80% or whatever. And like one of the things that I've realized just in that same vein is, is when you're operating at almost at almost a hundred percent or almost good or almost optimal, 
yeah. it feels good enough that um, if you do it long enough, it can feel kind of like, oh, this is just like how I operate. This is normal. Right. Um, and I I played in that space for a long time where I was just like, oh, like this is just how I feel. And it's crazy how different it is now that my patterns and habits and knowledge is a little bit tighter and I my sleep quality is a little bit better, how much more of a person I am <laughs> like yeah, I'm so right. much more balanced and, and emotionally and able to just oh, like totally. finish more stuff and just like do more things but because it was not quite like oh I'm dead exhausted but a little bit below like oh I feel super refreshed I I just didn't take it that seriously until it became um until I learned a little bit more and it became more obvious like what the actual capacity I had was mm-hmm. Yeah, I can really relate to that a lot. I'm curious though, what what kinds of things did you, you know, we've talked a lot about routines and that has helped both of us in kind of establishing better quality of sleep. What what were some things that you incorporated into your routine to have better quality? Okay, this one is really stupid, but the first <laughs> yeah. thing that came to mind was I used to have a, like a bedtime and I would just always miss it every single time (laughs) and I and I changed it to I have like a period of time that I'm going to bed Mm -hmm. so like uh, instead of like oh it's I don't know 11 I'm supposed to be in bed maybe like I go to bed at 10 30 and I need to be in bed by 11 super dumb small tweak but for me that made such a big difference because then like doesn't really take me 30 minutes to get ready for bed Right. But then I could yeah. kind of like, oh, you know, like I'm getting there, I'm going. And right. like, it gave me a, a period of time instead of sort of like a deadline for like, right. this needs to be done. Yeah. Um, that's one thing that surprisingly helped a lot. Mm. Another thing is, I, I'm not super perfect at this, but um, keeping my schedule on the weekends helped a mm-hmm. lot instead of uh, where I was, where it was like, add up sleep debt, pay it off on the weekend, yeah. add it back up. Um, that really messed with the quality things that improve the quality that I wasn't noticing as much until I really cut it out. was like drinking alcohol. Like Mm -hmm. now that I, now that I don't drink very often at all, I notice a, a, like a significant difference in sleep from even like one drink. Mm -hmm. And when I was doing that more consistently, like it wasn't noticeable unless it was a lot. So yeah, that's been kind of interesting. Um, Same with like caffeine, you know, Mm -hmm. making sure that I cut that by uh, noon is like the, the last time 10 Mm -hmm. is the ideal time. Um, A couple other things like around the environment, just like uh, blocking, blocking out noise or like I had earplugs for a bit. I still use them occasionally depending on Mm -hmm. the situation. Yeah. Um, So some of the stuff that's like very standard, right? Just like sleep mask some earplugs. Um, uh, I think that's, I think that's most of the things. Yeah. What about for you? Yeah. I, I mean, I've done some of the things that you've done, like my, the things that I've acquired over the years and improving my sleep quality is get an awesome mattress. (laughs) Important. Uh, invest in that. I got blackout blinds. Um, I like it dark. I like it cold. That's, that's something that helps me sleep. Like the summer is really hot here. So we had to turn on the AC at night, which yeah, sometimes it gets too cold, but I I like it cold. I noticed that my sleep quality is better if it's colder. Like I actually most like 80, 90% of the time I have to get up to use the bathroom in the middle of the night. I think this is just something that just came with age, unfortunately. (laughs) But last night when I got my 90, I didn't. And I always think that's like a better night's sleep when I can just sleep through the night. And I, I think it's more likely to happen if it's colder. So, so that's something I pay attention to is the temperature. Uh, other things I like to do, I kind of got into the routine of playing sleep music to kind of just like let my brain unwind and kind of get ready for relaxation. And it kind of just like, that's kind of like my sleep routine. And I kind of have a similar thing as you as like, you know, have a window maybe between like 10 and 10 30 is when I start to like prepare for sleep or even a little bit earlier, but I'll start the 
the music and it usually doesn't take me long. What else I do I do? I think, you know, outside of the sleep routine, I have other routines like my morning meditation and my meditate or my workout in the morning, I think helps that. I also cut out caffeine. I only do decaf at this point and alcohol, even though alcohol makes me, I don't drink a lot either. Um, but I noticed that like, I will get super, I can't like get drunk. I feel like anymore. I'm not 20 (laughs) because I get so tired from it. Like after two, I just want to go to sleep, but then, then the quality isn't so bad. I'm waking up so much partly to go to the bathroom and then partly just kind of, it's not like as deep it feels like, um, so it'll help me fall asleep faster, but the quality through the night isn't the best is what I've experienced. Yeah. So those, those are the, some of the things that I've done. Yeah. That reminded me of one that has actually made a huge difference for me, Mm -hmm. which is I stopped doing other stuff in my bedroom. Like Mm -hmm. I used to, Mm -hmm. I don't know, get on my laptop and shop or whatever, whatever I do on my laptop. I don't have no idea, but I stopped doing that in my bedroom. Like Mm -hmm. I'll do it on on the couch if I want to be lazy and just like relax, but that's in the living room. And I had heard in the past, you know, like, oh, you have to separate these things out Mm -hmm. and it will help you fall asleep faster. And I didn't really believe it until I actually did it very, very consistently. Like Mm -hmm. it didn't work for me until it was really consistent. So like even stuff like like, I know a lot of people will just lay in bed and browse on their phone. Like, I don't do that. (laughs) Yeah. Like if I want to do that, I'll get up and go to the couch and then just like, I do all the same lazy stuff. Like I didn't get more ambitious. I don't (laughs) not lounge, but really limiting the amount of stuff that happens in the bedroom has Mm -hmm. made it much faster for me to fall asleep. Like when I go in there, um, I feel like I'm just conditioned now to like, Oh, I'm going to go to sleep. Does it work 100% of the time? No. Like sometimes I still have trouble sleeping, but in general, I'm able to fall asleep much faster and easier than I have in the past because it's just so, so much clearer what's going on when I start getting ready for bed. Right. Yeah. It's like creating the sacred space for sleep, which I think is important and valuable. I'm not, I'm not consistent with that, but I'm a pretty good sleeper. So I <laughs> get away with it. I am curious though. Because I know this is a problem for a lot of engineers because I've worked with a lot of engineers helping them with their stress and anxiety. And the reoccurring problem that I heard was that, and I'm guilty of experiencing this too, not as frequently, but once in a while, like when I'm dealing with a lot of stress, it's like your brain is like running, 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 going, 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 and you just can't shut it off to sleep because you're just like overthinking what have you experienced that for one? And what have you done um, if that happens? <laughs> yeah, so I have experienced that, but the only time that it's been strong enough is when I like to be a problem is mm-hmm. when my work-life balance has been completely out of whack. Mm-hmm. And that means like, not like a long day or a long week, but like long months oh, okay. where basically like I wasn't doing anything to disconnect from work ever mm-hmm. pretty much. Yeah. So when I was in that mode, which was not healthy for a number of reasons, Mm -hmm. then that chatter at the end of the night was really strong. Mm -hmm. But nowadays when, when my thing, like my work life is a little bit more balanced. Yeah. um, The thing that prevents that is just not doing or thinking about work, like eh, probably up to an hour before bed, right? Like Mm -hmm. if I'm going to bed at 10, then at nine, like this stuff goes off, closed, do something else. Like, Mm -hmm. And that for me is enough of a, of a gap to sort of let my brain unwind and and not keep ruminating into the night. Yeah. It still happens from time to time, but just sort of, um, and part of this has been learned over the course of the last couple of years, but just like allowing myself to disconnect too. And that's easier said than done. I don't know if I have like a specific way of doing that, but, um, at a high level, it's just been doing something else for that last hour. Like, and, and when it was a problem, I would work right up until I would try to go to bed. Like oh. I would, you know, it, it'd yeah. be work the whole day, maybe take an hour or two for, for dinner and then come mm-hmm. back and work until bed. So right. now if I'm going to do something like that, I'll take 
I mean, I'll take that break for dinner or whatever, and then come back to work, but then not go straight into bed. Mm. Like no matter what that extra hour comes at the end now. Yeah. No, I think that's really big. And that's something I discovered for myself. I usually try to stop working by seven typically, but I know one of the downsides of being a business owner, it's like, you're, you're, you're working off the clock. There's no clock even <laughs> like you're working and you're not getting paid for a certain hour. So sometimes you get caught up in certain business ideas or, or projects and I, I get totally consumed by it. And then that, that's the thing that keeps me up. I'm not necessarily worrying about anything in particular. I'm just kind of like planning too much. <laughs> I can't like turn off my brain from from planning and being like, what's the next step going to be? And how is this going to look? And what's like, yeah. And so that that has kept me up at times where I'm just kind of like in a groove and I don't want to stop myself when I'm in flow state, <laughs> but at the same time, I value my sleep. So it's just this kind of internal struggle in a way. That's actually a really good and important distinction, I think, which mm-hmm. is the difference between like stress rumination before right. going to bed. And like, I don't know if excitement is a word that lands for you, Sometimes but it kind of lands for me because yeah. they're actually two very different things. So like stress from work stuff is what I said before, but if I have something in my head that I want to work on mm-hmm. and it's like just running around, right. I, I, I I will just skip my bedtime and do something <laughs> to like yeah. get that out of my system. But the thing that's, that's nice about that is it's, it's not like the stress <laughs> version because True. the stress version just like builds up day after day after yeah. day and causes a bunch of problems. Right. The excitement version, which I think I've had for like up to a week where I'm just like working these long hours on something that I just like really want to get done and, yeah. and I'm not stressed about it at all. Yeah. I'm okay sort of like paying that that mm-hmm. sleep debt out. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, like that's okay because it's never been like a, like three months of just like, yes, I'm so excited to work on this. Like, here we go. I'm going to knock it out. Um, yeah. But that's that. not that that's a general suggestion. That's just how I like personally have waited out. Like, mm-hmm. if I have something going on in my head that I'm excited or amped up about enough, yeah. or like you were saying, like plans, I'll yeah. at least just get up to like write everything out and right. then just like cool brain dump. And that's usually enough for me or mm-hmm. doing the work. Mm -hmm. to like have enough of a release to like okay I'm gonna go to bed yeah yeah it is definitely more gratifying but you know I think you gotta ride the wave while you can because it's it's not gonna last (laughs) forever in a way and I I enjoy the wave sometimes but yeah sometimes you gotta sometimes you gotta dial it back anyways um is there before we wrap up today was there anything else that you felt like was important to cover the only thing I want to highlight and mm-hmm. hammer home only because it's been more uh, noticeable to me is yeah. just like paying attention to the types of things that you consume and that oh, impact on your sleep, yeah. especially if it's regular, mm-hmm. because sometimes some of these patterns and habits are just so common where it's like, you know, I used to drink like quite a bit more and I used mm-hmm. to have a couple drinks every night and then just be like, yeah. yeah, this is, this is regular. And now that I don't do that, I'm mm-hmm. like, oh my God, my sleep was so much worse. And my quality of life, my quality of life wasn't like so much worse, but noticeably different, right? Like Mm -hmm. noticeably easier to manage certain things or like take on certain tasks or whatever Mm -hmm. else. But I wasn't waking up like, oh, I'm so hungover. Like every day I was, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't even noticing it. Yeah. So just uh, paying attention to any of those types Mm -hmm. of things, like, Mm -hmm maybe your room is bright at night or like there's noise or any of those kinds of things because your quality of sleep is not just the amount of time that you're sleeping. Um, And it can be really easy to miss some of the potential optimizations. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I do. I totally forgot to mention that. I noticed when I am eating cleaner, sleep quality is much, much better. Like sugar or that's why I kind of, I don't actually do caffeine much anymore mainly because it doesn't actually give me energy so I'm like what's the point but it does mess my sleep up so I'm like well that's not good so it's like I should have just like it was not that hard for me to give up caffeine and so but I like the taste of coffee so and I'm not 
snob be enough in coffee to not drink decaf so i enjoy the decaf <laughs> yes yeah that's another a good point it's just like for many of the things there's also like alternatives or options or things you can do to like wean yourself off because a lot of those sorts of habits i mean for you it didn't sound like that was a problem at all but for me for example at some point i need to bring my caffeine intake down i don't need to i would like to just to see the change in my quality of life and like where i'm at right now Mm -hmm. even though i have it sort of timed out so that it doesn't right it probably maybe doesn't mess with my sleep a ton uh i will have to i have to i will have to work my way down because just going from what i'm doing to zero will be much harder than it needs to be yeah it's it's one of the things like I put people on an elimination diet a lot to help them figure out their food sensitivities and like caffeine for a lot of people is like the one thing they're refused to give up. And I'm like, well, that means you're addicted for one if you refuse to give it up. And it's like, yes, you will most likely go through withdrawal, which isn't fun, but you have to kind of, you taper down might be a better approach. So you don't have like pounding headaches all the time. But once you like wean yourself off of it, uh, completely just like notice like how it affects your life and how you feel and and that you might actually have more energy from not drinking caffeine potentially is what I experienced so it's possible but I think it's good to you know it's not to say like don't ever drink caffeine ever again I'm not saying that when I tell people to like hey consider like they, like I have patients that are doing like 10 cups a day and I'm like you wonder why you have sleep problems. I'm like, consider, I'm like, come on, try, maybe try it out and just see, wouldn't that be worth it if you got like a good night's sleep, like consistently and regularly. And then, you know, once you know what it's like to go without it for a while and you're feeling better energy wise after you've gotten over the withdrawal part, then it's like, it's your choice whether you want to fuck up your sleep or sleep better, <laughs> but it's your choice. And then, you know, <laughs> and that's awesome. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. When, when it's your baseline, it's just so hard to know what effect it's actually having, you right. know, like that's, that's what I try to do even for the things that I feel like are potentially good for me is to just cycle off of them every mm-hmm. once in a while, just yeah. to see where they land in my life, because there's right. no way to tell without, sort of having a comparison to the baseline and right. for sleep uh, there's so many things that can mess with it or so ad- many. adjust it that if yeah. you're not having good quality sleep it's definitely worth just cycling off some of the stuff and you can come back to it later if you feel like yeah. it's if it works for you but yeah. you can't know that if if uh you've been on it consistently for i don't know five years or however long <laughs> right yeah yeah totally All right. Well, I think we covered this topic pretty well. Thank you everyone for tuning in and we appreciate you. And if you appreciate us, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, tell us about your sleep and what helps you get some good night's rest. All right. We will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoy this video, be sure to like it and then go and subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so you get notified when the next video comes out. And if you check out in the description below, go to my website where you can get my free fast and easy guide to stress relief. Thanks again for checking us out and we'll see you next time. <laughs>